Hello, my beautiful Taurin friends, and happy 2020. Here is your January horoscope where we have got eclipses happening this month, Saturn and Pluto coming together for this great conjunction that we've got going on, Uranus coming out of retrograde, Jupiter coming into conjunction with the south node. There is stuff happening this month, and I look forward to walking you through all of it and how it's going to impact you. Before we jump in, I hope you are signed up for the free forecast marathon that I'm doing with Astrology Hub. It's going to be January 9th through the 12th. If you want to get signed up, come hear about what 2020 has got in store for you. Meet the 12 other people I'm going to be teaching with and hanging out with this year. I would love to see you over there. Everything's in the description box down below, okay? All right, so jumping off right here at the beginning of the month, what we're going to see is that you see that this ninth house up here, all of this Capricorn energy is loaded. So as we cross this bridge from 2019 into 2020, one of the things I want you to keep in mind, and I say this in the um, annual video as well, if you haven't had a chance to watch that, is that what is happening right here in January is what has been happening in 2019. Nothing really new is on the surface or on the table right now. So we've seen these things. We've been interacting with these things at least since December, and we will continue on with them. But we're going to have old things in our lives, the same old situation, with brand new actions, brand new attitudes, brand new solutions to them. That's what we're coming across with with 2019. And so we start off in January on the 2nd with Mercury and Jupiter being in a conjunction up here in this ninth house. Now, the ninth house is all about publishing broadcasting, marketing, getting yourself out there, expanding in some way, shape, or form. It's about faith, your philosophies, beliefs, and ideas around life, religion, ceremony, tradition. It's also a wonderful house of international business, travel, law, all of these kinds of things will end up falling into this ninth house place. Now, as Jupiter is the home ruler traditionally of the ninth house in the natural zodiac, one of the things that I keep in mind with Jupiter and um, Mercury coming together here is that these are communication energy. So in the ninth house, if you've got something legal that needs to be handled, this could be a time where you could start seeing um, correspondence on that or you're doing you're doing something where there's conversation. Maybe um, you're doing something around school, education, publishing that book, getting those videos ready to put out there. Um, you're having a conversation at some kind of international level, whatever it is. Mercury and Jupiter together are going to expand conversation. They're going to expand business dealings. They're going to just expand the communication that is happening for you that very much so has you expanded out in the world, okay? Now, when we get to January 3rd, we see Mars, who's been in Scorpio, and he's going to leave this very comfortable, domicile kind of place for himself and move up here into the energy of Sagittarius, so lighting up your 8th house space. Now, when Mars comes into the 8th house, which is about joint things, joint resources, intimacy, sex, fear, astrology, anything where you're getting at a deeper level, counseling, debt, finances live here as well. So with Mars here in the 8th house, you could be taking care of 8th house things. Now, I don't know about you, Taurus, but for me, I have my taxes done every year by January 16th. And so we're here in January. And maybe if you don't have that level of hustle on you, that's fine. But Mars could be helping you take care of those things. Mars could also be helping you in a relationship. If your relationship's been in a little bit of a slump, this energy is very, very helpful to you. I do love Mars here for taking the action of studying, seeking knowledge. Remember, this is Sagittarian energy, so he wants to know things. Sagittarius likes to gather information and share information. So any place that you need to handle business, in a relationship, in counseling, in your money, anything like that where information is needed to take action on and be shared, Mars is going to definitely help you out here. And it'll help you meet the right people to help you get things done, okay? On the 8th, I want to talk about this just briefly, and I'm going to make a separate video about it. But on the 8th, at 8 degrees of Capricorn, Jupiter is going to come into conjunction with the south node. This is important to understand because as we're coming forward and we have set the stage for our intentions, what do we want going forward, what are we working towards, I would tell you, we're getting ready to have eclipse energy. We're getting ready to have this conjunction, but on the 8th, 
Jupiter and the South Node, they come together in more of a space that is about the past than it is about the future, right? It's so karmic, you guys. So if you have these two together and you're trying to make plans for your future, those plans are rooted and based in the past, right? They're not rooted and based in something that wants to expand and bring you forward. So because there's just so much karma attached to what you're cleaning up here, what you're looking back over. You know, remember Jupiter in Capricorn, while he is in fall and he's not very comfortable here, when he's in conjunction with that south node, you're getting to look back over the things that maybe didn't work. Maybe where Jupiter is a pattern of 12 years. What's been going on for about 12 years that you're ready to do some detaching from so that you can move forward into your future? So I would just tell you here, on the 8th, if you're getting your, your vision boarding ready, you know, it's just a day before we do the free um, marathon over at Astrology Hub, just give it a day before you set those intentions. Because if not, you may be trying to set an intention from for your future from a place that's just so far in the past. Instead, use this a little bit more as a reflection time, okay? All right, then we get to the 10th, and we have got this full moon lunar eclipse happening at 20 degrees of cancer and I'm going to mark that just so you can see it 20 degrees of cancer so for you Taurus this is going to light up the third house space okay now the lunar eclipses eclipses are sometimes really hard times to set these firm intentions because we're doing such big sweeping out and cleaning and getting things adjusted but at this lunar eclipse it's a great time where you're going to see that things are going to come to an end something's going to need to be adjusted um, or you're going to have to acknowledge something that's been going on in this third house area and you can take some action on it in the next six months one of the things that keeps coming up for me because this is a nice movement between your third and ninth house is that maybe some of you are starting to truly write those books write those blogs write courses write something down maybe you're even just starting journaling as you're along this astrological journey something about it and it's going to help you expand out expand your thinking expand your reach expand your ideas in some way shape or form the other thing just in general in the third house we do learning here are you starting a new course of study or getting ready to in the next coming months remember you have six months for this to play out right um, new communication, different things happening with siblings, any of these things that are third house matters. And I will say buying and selling does fall into here as well. So if you have been trying to get something sold or you've been thinking that you want to sell something or you want to buy something, in the next six months, this energy will likely help you to be able to do that, okay? All right, we get to the 11th. Now, the first thing that's going to happen on the 11th is our friend Uranus, who is here and has been retrograde, is going to come out of retrograde. And Taurus, it's in your sign, which means... For the next seven years, you basically have no chill, <laughs> right? Uranus is a stubborn energy. Taurus, you are a stubborn energy, and we put you two together, and this is stubborn, but you're getting different. Taurus, how many of you have changed your body? Something very significant has changed for you because Uranus comes in and says, Taurus, you're beautiful. We love your show, but we need to adjust. We need to freshen up here. I got to get you out of this rut so that you can be the Taurus that is going to live in this future life and plans that you've been working on. It's so great. I just remember hearing this thing where it said, how did you build the statue of David? And he said, I didn't. I just chipped away all the pieces that weren't David. And that's exactly what I think about with Uranus and Taurus. Uranus is coming and is chipping away those pieces that aren't Taurus anymore. You don't need them anymore. So with Uranus out of retrograde here, Reflection, reflection, reflection is what has been going on. You've been re-looking over things from the past. You've been re-looking over you, your identity, the way that you do things, your external environments, where you live. All of these things have been under review at least since August, okay? And now that Uranus is out of retrograde, you're going to move yourself forward. You're going to move into different circles. You're going to move in the exact same circles in a different way. It just really lights up this energy of being able to be innovative. And the innovation has happened to you yourself, Taurus, which will, of course, impact every other area here, especially since you're honest, it's technological, and we're telling you to get out there and to expand into the world. What better way to do that than with technology? All right, on the 12th or the 11th, depending on where you live, we've got this great Saturn-Pluto conjunction, so this is a reset, right? This is not... Um 
This is not a small deal. This is not the small hokey pokey. It's certainly not. So we're going to have Saturn and Pluto together in a conjunction at 22 degrees of Capricorn. Okay, so because Saturn and Pluto, when they come together, creates this slow evolutionary change, what it can feel like is happening in this area is Pluto is saying, okay, Taurus, I need you to die off in this area. We can't live this way anymore, right? I need you to kind of um, become that phoenix. I need you to die off and, and go to your ashes and then rise again, right? And then Saturn's saying, yes, and I'm going to take you to the next level. I'm going to show you how to advance this area of your life, and I'm going to show you between the two of us where you need to concentrate your efforts and increase your efficiency, increase your maturity, increase your earning and wealth success power, right? So as these two come together in their conjunction up here, they are resetting this area of your life for the next 34 years. So think about that as you're making these changes. And what it can feel like with Saturn and Pluto conjuncting like this is it can feel like loss, it can feel like something has been sucked out or been pulled out. For some of you, depending on your chart, it'll feel like, oh, this is my saving grace. But for many, it will feel like loss. And the loss is showing you where to focus your attention and be more efficient, okay? And the universe never leaves a hole. So whatever you see here will dominate your actions going forward to expand you out into the world, to change your faith, to change the level of international business, to get that book, to get those videos out there. And remember, it's set to the tune of Uranus is out of retrograde, so it's okay for Taurus to be different. Okay, when we get to the 13th, we have Venus moving on out of the energy of Aquarius, and she is going to move into the energy of Pisces. So this is great for the 11th house, okay? So friends, this makes you magnetic. It's a wonderfully social energy. The 11th house is about friends, social groupings, organizations. It's also about your future. What do you want for your future? So one of the things I think of with Venus here in the 11th house is, oh, as well is that of course you could be setting plans, setting your course for your relationships and finances in the future and moving forward. It's an absolutely brilliant energy. Now, as we get to the 27th of January, Venus and Neptune will actually come into conjunction with each other. And I love that because they're the Bobsy twins. It's a very blissful energy. Everything feels good. It's a day to pamper yourself, love on the people you love, but it is not the best day on the 27th to be making big decisions because they are also entirely entirely hazy as a, an energy. So you maybe don't have all of the facts. So I would just tell you to pause for a little on the 27th and the 28th if you can in making any really big decisions, especially around your relationships or your finances. All right, on the 16th of the month, things kick off into your career zone. First thing that we're going to have happen is Mercury is going to take a jump out of that Capricorn energy move into the energy of Aquarius. Then we will have the sun moving on and moving into the energy of Aquarius. And last but absolutely not least is that we're going to have a new moon happening in the energy of Aquarius as well. So now your 10th house becomes nicely lit up with some action. And again, if you remember what I was showing you about your hemispheres, the top of the chart is lit up, so it's a very public month for you. You're really doing things out in the public world. Now these energies here, especially with this new moon happening, are gonna be your chance to set your, um, your goals, plant your seeds of intention. What do you want at work, right? In the energy of Aquarius, where can you socialize more? Where do you need to network in your work? Where do you need to innovate in your work a little bit. Any of these energies here at the beginning of the 16th all the way through the rest of the month are going to be helpful to you to make these changes in career. And because Mercury's here, you could hear that you're getting a raise, that you are doing something like that that is going to kind of help take you to the next level, but it's also very busy. Mercury creates busyness at work as well, okay? Now, the last day I want to tell you about is I told you about the 27th, but the 28th of this month, Mars, who's over in Sagittarius, is going to come into a square here with Neptune, who is in um, your 11th house in this Pisces energy. Now, when Mars and Neptune come into a square with one another, this can be an energy where I'm going to tell you something from the past. You could be working on or recognizing something that happened in the past, especially in a friend group. Your 8th house is taking on your 11th house. Maybe something very intimate happened with a friend. Maybe you had some kind of trauma or you've had some kind of free fear around a social grouping or something like that. And Neptune and Mars together 
in a square are going to ask you to take action on that. Maybe you have to admit what you're uncomfortable, what you're unafraid, what you're unafraid, what you're afraid of, or what you maybe did wrong, or maybe that someone wronged you, so that you can work through it, seek professional help if that's something that needs to happen, or to make some moves on it. But it's not the best day to make huge life-changing decisions. But that square is going to stimulate you into seeing something that has happened or was a part of your past in some way, shape, or form so that you can step forward and clean that up, okay? All right, you guys, it's a busy month. I'm sorry this forecast was a little bit longer than normal. I wanted to give you a good big picture and some breakdowns of what's going on. I hope you have a beautiful January. I look forward to walking with you through it, and I will see you guys in the next video and, of course, at the free forecast event with Astrology Hub, January 9th through the 11th through the 12th. Feel free to sign up down below, okay? I love you guys. Bye.